it's talk time now. Nigeria's election management umpire says it declared the 2015 Kogi state governorship election inconclusive, not as a result of Abubakar Odu's death, but due to what it terms obstruction in five registration areas. The Independent National Electoral Commission believes the recurring decimal of inconclusive elections can only be fixed if enduring legal frameworks are put in place to compel political parties and politicians play by the rules. TVC News uh, correspondent Jokia Adesai reports. In recent times, inconclusive elections have become a dominant discourse in the mainstream media. Opinions are divided among key observers as to why some of the polls recently held have ended up as inconclusive. This gathering is put together by INEX Electoral Institute to discuss the trend of inconclusive elections and the challenge of strengthening the electoral process in Nigeria. Using the 2015 Kogi State Governorship election as a case in point, INEC insists inconclusive elections aren't a failure of the electoral process. The reason why we had inconclusive in Kogi uh, governorship election was not because Governor Aldo died, his role was in peace. It was because a whole chunk of the Kina five registration areas was obstructed. There was no police cover, nobody could go to those five areas. A whole 17,000 votes were lost there, so we had to recover. The discussants offer varied suggestions that will put an end to inconclusive elections, but all agree that there is the need to insulate the commission from all manner of interference and to put in place enabling legislations that will discourage violence in elections. To help the commission in very concrete ways that will enrich decision-making processes, policy-making processes, in such a way that we'll get out of this long job. We must not lose lives because of an election. If we are able to send this message down to the grassroots, I think our elections will be conclusive. And unfortunately, we also operate a winner-takes-all system of government. Those who win, win everything, and those who lose, lose everything. The commission blames the media for the negative comments against it on inconclusive polls, even as it insists the inconclusive elections aren't up to 10% of the 137 elections it has so far conducted in the last nine months. Jokai Adisa, TVC News, Abuja. Not joining us is the President, Center for Democracy and Social Economic Rights, Bukwola Ajayi. It's good to have you join us this morning. Oh, good morning. Now, let us, let us see this in perspective. The issues of uh, uh, inconclusive elections started from Kogi State in the recent, recent uh, trend. Uh, Kogi State, and then we had it in River State, and we had it, had, had it in Imo State and so on and people are saying well this is it seems it's becoming a, 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 an electoral issue now to have inconclusive elections but is that seen as an electoral failure if we have to see it in true context well um I'll, uh, well to start with it is certainly a failure but again who do you blame for that i think that's the question mm. and before going into um, who to blame for it because it will continue. As far as I'm concerned, there is no end to it yet. We need to look at the various stakeholders in the election process. What are their roles? What are their responsibilities? How are they, you know, carrying out those responsibilities? Then here we have um, the political parties and the politicians. Um, the political parties are the critical and the major stakeholders in the election process because they are the one contesting for elections. But if you look at um, you know Nigerian you know political space, where people see political office as a shortcut to emergency wealth, they believe that once they are there they can use the opportunity to harness the resources of the state, you know, for the benefit of themselves. 
So hence the desperation. They become so desperate to get into political offices and they are ready to do anything whatsoever. That more or less buttresses the point um, INEC has been making as to this off-season, because that's where we usually see conclusive um, results now on the part, usually this off-season elections, like what we will no, have on, on, on even, Saturday. No, 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 no. Even by the time you come to general election, the same thing will happen. But because, INEC, no, let me okay. land. Let me land on All this. Right. Because I said desperation, you know, on the part of political uh, parties and uh, political actors the gladiators, so to say. So they want to take charge of this political space, of their states, of the nation, simply because of themselves, to enrich themselves. Simply because a political office today in Nigeria is not seen as an avenue to, to serve, but as an avenue to get, um, um, you know, um, um, quick wealth. Look, so I therefore, so therefore, right. so the political parties and their leaders fail, uh, you know, to um, um, to teach or to mobilize their members to conduct themselves well. So they are not ready to play according to the rules. So they want to do anything, you know, to ensure, we're talking about violence, who are they called? The police or INEC? These are members of these political parties. You know, political party leaders hire thugs, hire their members sometimes, you know, to unleash violence. In areas they know that they are likely to lose. So that is for that. So then we have um, security agents now. Right. So, of course, we know that every facet of our country um, has been beaten by the, this um, 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 bug called corruption. So, and of course, the security agencies are part and parcel of the society. So we don't expect them to behave like, um, like they come from other um, planets. So they are part of, they themselves are somehow partisan. So they want to uh, support wherever their bread is being buttered. And, you know, sometimes they even act, they assist thugs, you know, to unleash the violence, um, you know, against the people. All right, so this, so, is, this is my own so um, that is point that I want now. you to, uh, to yeah. also uh, address. While, right. you know, you are also, you know, um, putting all those into context now. INEC is saying um, off-season elections, are the most challenging for them because that's where you, um, you get the case of inconclusive polls i know you will still go back to general elections now but when we look at like mike has said now recently now by elsa um, rivers and of course with fears now by in some quarters that edo state might just end we we just pray that okay it, things will be different now but do you agree to that extent now to, um, to what INEC is saying now that this do or die affair of politicians during off-season elections are what makes them uh, arrive but inconclusive results. No, I disagree with them. Because if you cannot manage, if you have a um, challenge, you know, managing an off-season election, then it does mean that they cannot um, conduct a general election. That, that's what they are saying. Because the stake will be higher during um, um, the general election. So that's, there is no basis for that. So, but what we are saying is that if, if we don't address, you know, uh, the issues, you know, um, um, causing the um, 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 violence and uh, you know desperation to win at all costs, do or die election. If you don't eliminate that, then we we'll continue to have an uh, um, inconclusive election. That's what I'm trying to say. That, but even the INEC themselves, you know, we've read about how even the uh, INEC staff and agents, even commissioners, compromise the system, the process, you know, in favor of one candidate or the other. So in essence, um, if we going to have a free and fair election, all stakeholders in the process must live up to expectation. The political parties, INEC, security agencies, and even the electorate themselves. Because of the level of poverty, they allow themselves to be used, you know, to perpetrate, you know, um, um, these um, crimes. So all stakeholders, we cannot single out anybody now. So that's my own position. That okay, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly come back to this because uh, there are other areas we'd like to touch on this. But let's, let's see, Nigeria's electoral umpire, the Independent National Electoral Commission, has the duty of planning, implementing, and ensuring a free, fair, and credible elections. Now, the commission has come under heavy criticisms 
for the recent trends of the inconclusive elections. Once again, all eyes are on INEC as the body prepares to conduct the governorship election in Edo State on September the 10th, all things being equal. Well, under INEC uh, new boss, of course, Mahmoud Yakubo, the commission has conducted 139 rerun elections. Uh, and this flows from the 680 court cases filed against INEC after last year's general election. We had 118 at first ballot, uh, 21 after supplementary, uh, out of a total of 163 scheduled elections, while 22 elections uh, were suspended due to violence as uh, two elections were also uh, declared subjudice. Now, elections conducted by the Commission in the past few months were inconclusive in states like Kogi, Rivers, Bayelsa, Oshun, Imu, Nasarawa, Abia, and the FCT. Now, INEC argues that the inconclusive elections are not as a result of weak electoral process, but as a result of violence, malfunctioning smart card readers, and the need to account for all polling units also contribute to results being inconclusive. Now, many have called for the reconstitution of the INEC board by setting up of Electoral Offences Tribunal to help reduce the rate of inconclusive elections in the country. All right, now let's, let's come to this issue now. When you talk about inconclusive election, how does it constitute to an unfairness on the process? Because INEC is supposed to be, like we, we, said, we, said early, we stated earlier, it's supposed to conduct a free, fair and credible free. election in the eyes of all of the parties that are involved. Now, when an issue of inconclusiveness comes in, how unfairness does that play out well, certainly, to any of the parties? You know, who, certainly, right. certainly. Any, uh, any form of um, 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 inconclusiveness hmm. um, is a failure. We are all agree. And um, whether it is failure of planning, or failure of um, a smart card, but to me, even um, uh, or planning or smart card or whatever, even violent, um, to me, it cannot be fair to anybody, even the winner or the loser, because in any contest, it must be seen that if whoever um, wins must win, you know, clearly, and the losers must know that okay, I've tried my best, and it must be clear to everybody why he lost and why the other person wins the election. So, um, well, in terms of fairness, it cannot be seen to be uh, fair to all. But again, um, I don't want a situation where we just isolate, you know, an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, like today, people talk about the economy and say, oh, worry this, worry that, worry this. And Forgetting that since 1980, uh, 1981, um, late um, Chief Ababa and Aula actually won the Nigerian nation, but nobody um, heeds the call then. Of course, you know, from 1980, 81 till date, you know, when the first come of Wali, you know, he, he, and the Diagma, they made an attempt, you know, to, um, to change um, um, the face, but people complain. Just people were complaining now, you know, singling out Wali and the ruling party. You know, that they don't have economy, they don't have plan, they don't have... The same thing coming to, you know, that is, and that is the way Nigerians react to all issues. So it's just the one that suits them, we just pick that one out. So, but what we are saying is this, honestly, honestly, um, of course, um, it gives us, some of us, great, great concern that if we cannot conduct an election in one state, or in one constituency, or a part of a state, you know, then how will you face the general election? And are we so, not even dealing with greater implications here? Like, look at the case of Rivers now, an election or a legislative rerun that was to have been held, and INEC says because of fears of violence uh, uh, by both sides now, by both major sides, of course, now, postpone the elections. We don't even have a date now. Uh, or, or I stand to be corrected, but there is no date on record as to when these elections will hold. Thereby, you know, we're not even having a full representation now in the legislative houses. For and, those and for those, exactly. So are we not even yeah. dealing with, um, you know, greater implications where INEC, you know, fails to uh, live up to its, its uh, expectations? Is it here? I'm, very sorry. I'm not speaking for INEC here. But I want us to put the whole thing, you know, within a proper perspective and context. Um, you are living witness to what happened in River State during the general election. Even before the election, the level 
of violence in the states. The number of people that were killed, the number of communities that were sacked, like during the election, you know, the, you know, when people, you know, came out with sophisticated weapon, you know, and then the security agents there, yeah, of course, uh, most of them were not harmed. What do you expect them to do? So the case of River State, for instance. Stands out. Uh, it's not even Kogi that um, we refer to. Um, about um, 91 polling units were cancelled because of what? Violence. So it's the same problem. So, of course, um, we have um, security agents, the police especially, who were to um, um, enforce law and other rights. So rather than blame um, um, INEC alone, let us look at the, uh, how best are the security agents carrying out their responsibility. So that is the issue. So if I'm very sure that even the security agents can ensure that there will be uh, that uh, any act of violence will be named during the election. Why not? Then again, to the political gladiators, talk to them. In fact, the politicians are the cause of all the inconclusive um, election, as far as I'm concerned. Because if everybody uh, play, plays according to the rule, you know, there won't be any reason why there should be inconclusive, inconclusive election. The worst thing can, that can happen that we know I neck for is relay arrival of um, electoral yes. material, um, you know, mismatch. Now we the, so no, the cards, the cards they take um, um, uh, materials for Ward A, they can take it to Ward F, mm. but I know that within <laughs> two, three hours, that one can be sorted out and the election will still hold. The only thing that can happen is the elongation of the period mm. of the election. So, but as long as the political office, uh, politi politicians especially, or the political gladiators continue, you know, to act desperately to win the election at all costs, as if once they get in there, they will never leave the offices again. So, so long as we have that, we continue to have an inconclusive Okay, inconclusive now give, a, give us an ideal picture of what really constitutes a free and a fair election. What should it be? All right. <laughs> a free, from my own um, point of view, a free and fair election starts from, you know, um, the rights of the citizens, you know, to freely, you know, exercise their franchise, mm. to choose whoever they want to choose, you know, free, freely, without any form of um, inducement or incumbrances. And it starts from um, registration. Of course, um, even this um, idea of having to declare a day, public holiday, to register people to vote, to me, is, um, is a sign of um, backwardness. Because we have um, national um, uh, this, um, uh, 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 population hmm. who are supposed to have um, the detail um, um, uh, 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 register of everyone. Of everyone. So, and if from age 18 and above, easily we should know the number of Nigerians qualified to vote. But okay, that is the level we are now. Uh, if you are able to register, you know, to vote, then on the day of election, you can go there with your PVC or if we scale it up, where we do electronic um, voting, you go there, you know, vote for whoever you want to vote for. And every vote counts. It's not a situation where you are prevented from, you know, exercising your uh, franchise or um, your vote um, is irrelevant. That is, uh, whether you vote or not, a winner will emerge. So to me, when you have that in place, the end result will certainly be free and fair election. And everybody plays according to the rules. You know? Yes, I neck, you know, play according to as the umpire, be an umpire, unbiased umpire. Do the planning, make your planning open to everybody. Then to the uh, political parties too, mobilize and canvas for votes based on programs 
are not um, based on, you know, rice, uh, money, um, what have you. Sometimes Indomie slippers. Oh. <laughs> they know just what the average voter would need now, and they, and they go out now to uh, entice. Mm. No, to, they to entice. induce them. Because okay, they know that the people are hungry. And they know that some people just want 500 naira. And in fact, it's really so sad today that, ah, they say, ah, Papa, why are you taking money? They say, ah, that this is the last thing I'll get from them. I better take it now. If I don't take that 1,000 naira, in fact, I won't see them again. So they know that there's poverty, and they know that um, the people's psyche has been so bastardized that they think that if they don't collect that 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 naira, they are going to die. But All speaking of which, die. is it even a lesser evil if one is induced, if one acknowledges that he's induced and even accepts that gratification and still goes ahead to vote his conscience? Well, um, well, I don't know how many Nigerians <laughs> that see as uh, that thing we call consensus. <laughs> but that, that, that would, you, 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 are, you will be held accountable as far as that is. You're complicit. Oh, yeah. You're complicit in that already. If you're not part of it, don't be don't part of it. Don't even take it. Yeah, that, is the, that is the idea. Hmm. It is either you, are, of course, um, recently there was um, a primary election in all those states. We're there to monitor the. Of course, you see, you need to see the way, you know, you know the the so-called delegates, and you know some of them go jumping from one camp to another, taking money. And I learned that some even um, 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 candidates um, um, shared as much as two hundred thousand. You know, for what? For God's sake. But when you interview some of um, the delegates, say, ha, that's, ah, when do you think I will ever get um, an opportunity like, like this? this? Again. So it does mean that even the people, you know, in fact, a lot has to be done, that even the political actors and governments now must not begin to uh, rekindle people's interest and confidence in whatever they do. But because today they believe that, um, oh, they are there, it's we and them. Once they are there, they are there, they are there for themselves. And so it's an opportunity to just rake in whatever. But not knowing that it's a, a greater danger because they are mortgaging their own um, um, future. But why the other people see, I mean, the political actors just understand that this is business. All if right. they invest X, they must reap Y in the final analysis. So the people must, you know, the people in government, I don't know how it can happen. Because even the over-monetization of the electoral process itself, we are not even looking at that. Where even you know, to pick a form, you spend millions of naira. And today we don't have parties in the recent of it. In the time past, people, members contribute, you know, at meetings for the running of their parties. So in that respect, everybody, all members are stakeholders. But today we have a situation where some money bags will put down money. Where is the money coming from? I think you understand. So not until we now, you know, begin to look at the whole process, you know, then begin to build a new culture, a new Nigeria, where we have political parties in the true sense of it, where all members will be stakeholders. And not a situation where somebody will sit down and think uh, he's the owner of the party, or some few clique will sit down that the party belongs to them and they must detect everything. So we need to get to that point. All right, let's also talk about, you know, um, explore it further. In declaring um, the results inconclusive in Kogi State, for example, yeah. now INEC, um, INEC's rationale was there was an overwhelming number of invalid votes uh, as against the, the, the margin between uh, the top two. Uh, what's the problem here? Is it a matter of um, voter education not being enough? As in, why would we have so many invalid in, invalid votes now? Uh, well, that is part of it, majorly part of it, but that's education. Um, um, it's very, um, well, I don't know uh, whose responsibility is it INEC or political parties. I sincerely believe that uh, it is the responsibility of political parties to adequately educate their members, and their members will in turn educate people 
within their own jurisdiction. You can't rule out civil society. No, too. of course, no. Okay. The civil society has a, 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 a major role to play here. But again, what I'm saying is that uh, the political parties and political actors are the main beneficiary of the process. In the sense of uh, in the sense that they are the one contesting the elections. And then win or lose is for them. So I believe they have greater responsibility to educate um, their members and the populace on how uh, to vote, whatever um, um, whatever uh, rules set by INEC, it is their own responsibility to educate their member properly. But again, we know that people are voting not because um, <laughs> we know why they are voting. Um, some people um, um, are disinterested. Because of failure of government, because you begin to wonder what is the impact of um, government. And you know one um, Lukman or one Ayodele or one that you play together in the neighborhood because it's now in the state assembly or because it's now a councillor, because it's now, um, you know, his fortune has suddenly changed. And within your um, locality, you know, your neighborhood, you are not feeling the impact of government. You are your own local government, you provide your own water, you educate your children, you, you know, you cater for yourself the totality of your needs. Then, why must you be interested in that? Of course, even the, the process itself is sometimes cumbersome where you have to leave your house very early in the morning mm -hmm. and you never can tell when you return. You stay on the queue for almost for, the whole you day. You know, for hours, in the rain, in the sun, I'm saying, ah, what is my own day? All right, let's, let's <laughs> look at, uh, in reducing the uh, occurrences of inconclusive elections, what factors should be considered now? Because we're looking into the practical terms now. More elections are coming. Edo State election is the next very, is the closest one. After that, there are still going to be yes, more elections. More. What factors should be considered in minimizing the issues or issues of inconclusive elections? Well, we all know that. The first one is for INEC to be diligent. Be, in fact, you agree me, with me that even from inception, um, there is no election ever conducted by INEC that um, was um, inch free. Mm. Not even anywhere in the world. Uh, no, not even, <laughs> yes, we know. Uh, so, but no, our own case is, we have a peculiar. It's peculiar. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't compare us with, um, not even the Republic of Benin here. <laughs> Don't compare with anybody. Face, let us face our own peculiarity and challenges then relate with it as that. So the INEC must be clear mm, and they must live up to expectation. If they say election starts seven o'clock, by that seven o'clock, let everybody, all um, polling agent, materials, everything be there. So that anybody that comes in by that seven a.m. will be attended to. And then again, the security agents now. I don't know why we have um, um, DSS, I don't know because I would say if people are planning, people are planning, you know, to unleash violence, people are planning to rig elections. It's not a thing that will be done by an individual. It will require, you know, some meetings and, you know, some logistics and whatever. So if we have adequate intelligence, even before they leave wherever they want to be their camp or their homes or wherever, and we have adequate intelligence that will say, okay, go to us four, some people are there, you know, planning X and, you know, and they immediately they are rounded up. They won't get to polling units. They won't get, get to polling stations. So if we have um, uh, the DSS now, must, you know, leave. And of course, in fact, I, you know, sometimes on another platform, I even advocated that um, they should be disbanded. Or at least the majority of them, you know, be, be, be sent away, then recruit brand new people. Because if we're talking about uh, the issue of Boko Haram, why, why is it that uh, the team grew up to monster? If, you know, at the minimal level, we have adequate intelligence, in fact, of course, they would have been wiped out. Um, look at um, the, even the Niger Delta team, the Arepo here, yes, I believe them, okay, 
there is an improved intelligence work there, you know, to know where there are camps, uh, then, you know, deal with them there without necessarily escalating it to surrounding communities. The same thing here. Yeah. So, intelligence must be strong. Then the Nigerian police must live up to, you know, their expectation. Then civil defense and other security agents must be life to their um, be life to their uh, life to their responsibility, so that we know that um, okay, if I neck um, has done their own bit, and uh, the security agents now, because leave the politician, Nigerian politician will behave the same way until until the electoral act, you know. Um, the electoral offenders, um, you know, ele uh, until electoral offenders have been punished. While we are looking at, um, you know, ele elections slated for Saturday in uh, Edo State, now gubernatorial elections, that is, uh, from what you have seen on ground, um, I'm sure you, you have eyes and ears yeah, yes, on, on, on ground there. there. From what you've seen on ground, uh, what do you think will be the final conclusion at the end of the day as to how the elections will go, inconclusive or not? Uh, yes, I see. No man, now you should expect that. Why? The reason is very simple. Th that the results will be inc inconclusive. Ah, that the elections will be inconclusive. <laughs> that's the question. And that's exactly what I'm saying. That's, that, that, no, wait, that's exactly what I'm saying. Mm. Because if you look at the tone of the campaign, you know, allegation, counter allegation, then we have um, two camps. The PDP um, um, desperately, you know, out to prove a point. Why the ruling party there, you know, desperately has to put to prove a point in that this is our own territory, we must retain no it. I think that's time we must retain it, you know, at all costs. Why the PDP, you know, um, the feeling that okay, we must get this thing back to prove that we are still there. So, if you look at the tone of the campaign and the way the political actors there are behaving. The issue of violence cannot be ruled out. And once there is violence anywhere with this, our inconclusive style, it means that the election in those polling areas will but necessarily, wouldn't that amount will necessarily to, be cancelled. Wouldn't that amount to preempting what is going to come in an election that has not been conducted? We because not, we have see, such cases even in Lagos State at the last election, governorship election, where the, the ruling party and the and the other, there was a hit. The, the electoral process was very heated in Lagos. It was the same thing in Benue State. It was the same thing in most of the state. In fact, even in Kogi State, as the case may be. And we had a clear court. And we had the, an election that was not inconclusive. Oh, uh, you see. So, so, so. We are not preventing. Because, because, because. Well, the, see, you know, before now, we said let all the stakeholders play according to the rule. Ideally, I think you understand. If that is done, of course, we are not presenting. We are only seeing what we've seen over there, that you cannot rule out incident of violence. And of course, I'm not, not referring to what um, police and DSS are saying. You know, those ones are just on serious. Uh, yeah. And I don't <laughs> think it's largely, it's largely peaceful, but, <laughs> but, but of course the, the countdown continues. And All right, Kukbo uh, Lajai, uh, thank you very much, uh, President, uh, Center for Democracy and Social Economic Rights. Thanks for joining us on TBC Breakfast. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, this is where we come to the end of today's discussion. We have dwelt on several issues that uh, taught the Nigerian life. But tomorrow is going to be another time again for us to be on the program. And uh, I am Mike Okwache. Well, thank you very much for keeping us company. Once again, the countdown to Edo gubernatorial elections continue. We'll continue, of course, bring you updates now uh, as we count down to Saturday. Thanks a lot once again. I am Kemi Foladeyemo. Have a great day.